Irish Media Network. We entertain. What's the crack, guys? It's Dara, back from another episode of About Last Night. Here for something a wee bit different today, we've got indie rock band Ash. They had a fantastic interview with us earlier, and I'm hoping for an even more fantastic show. Stick around. So crack guys, it's Dara back from our episode about last night. I'm here with none other than Ash. How are you doing guys? Really well, thanks. You've had a bit of a roller coaster year. You've been uh, you've turned all over the world, Japan, USA, and then yeah. back home, obviously finishing up in Belfast. Yeah. So can you talk us through a wee bit about how this year's been for you? It's been uh, you've been back into the top twenty album chart for the first time in ten years and tell us a wee bit about how this year's been for you. Oh, it's been class. We um you had an album that came out in May called Islands and uh, that's really when all the touring kicked off yeah, yeah we kind of launched that in, in Belfast at the uh, Titanic Keys for the BBC Six Music thing so it's like we're, we're back in Belfast for, for our last gig of the year nice. and uh, yeah. so yeah it's kind of full circle in between that we've been we've been all over the place so. yeah we were like um, September we were in the US and o- October UK tour November we were off in like Asia Japan Australia. Australia and then just been all around Europe the last few yeah. weeks so finished yeah. tonight's the last show actually. nice uh, yeah. so there's no jet lag after this back home for the yeah, holidays yeah exactly yeah fantastic so your album Islands came out this year and um, back on the label where it all began infectious right, so yeah. how do you feel this album has evolved from where you began back in that day and how do you feel your sound has evolved um, I think there's stuff on the record that is reminiscent of old stuff like there's a track um, Buzzkill which is quite punky and could have fitted on like 1977 but then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that is you know quite different sounding like Confessions in the Pool is I know a bit different to anything we've really done yeah, as well so yeah. um, I think yeah, as the album goes on it gets further and further away into yeah. new territory like it's side two is quite really quite interesting so so how do you feel the scene nowadays has reacted to your music as opposed to how it used to you've got bands coming through these days like brand new friends who yeah. you basically have kind of paved the way for them to kind of become as big as they have been so how do you think the scene in northern ireland and europe and across the world has changed in regards to your music yeah it's kind of kind of hard to tell it's like you know it's, it's kind of a weird thing to have a brand new friend who kind of like you really kind of look up to us and it's like some of their like first shows was coming to see us and they're like you know they're so young there's a lot of things that are kind of quite like, a little bit kind of reminiscent to the the ash world but um yeah it's always a weird one when you, you get that kind of like elder statesman kind of vibe i don't, yeah. think, we, I don't think we'll ever get comfortable with that, that, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that i don't think that's ever gonna set because we yeah. you know it's like no matter how much we've done we're always kind of looking to, to the next thing and wh- where we're going to take the music next so yeah. you know it's all about the future not necessarily you know we, we do have a, a, a great past and we're proud of it but you know we're always still well, well, speaking of past and future, we'll start with the past first. Have you got any crazy stories? You toured with David Bowie back in the day. Well, have you got any mental stories from back in the past? Um, yeah, we've, we've had some great shows over the years. Like, yeah, we toured of, did a Moby and David Bowie tour. We took, like, Coldplay. We've done a lot of big U2 shows. You know, yeah. they've played a lot of, like, the big, like, football stadiums of Europe and rugby stadiums with them. Um, it's yeah. a bit different to what you're playing tonight. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Limelight, yeah. Yeah, I guess we're always used to like jumping between like really big festival shows and you know like decent sized club shows here or like tiny club shows in America. Yeah, yeah well, it's nice to vary it. Yeah, yeah, it keeps yeah. things interesting. Hundred percent. And then speaking about the future, you've got War Park Three coming up next year yeah. with Snow Patrol and Brand New Friends, of course, yeah. as well on the bill. Yeah. So that's going to be very exciting. I don't think there's really any other gigs to really yeah. come before that or anything like that. So yeah. Um, how, how do you, how do you, are you excited about that? How do you feel yeah, about that well the coolest thing about that whole show is um, it's an entirely Northern Irish bill. Yeah. You know, they've really wanted to pull that together and they really, really wanted us to, like we had a night drinking with them in Boston and they were like telling us about it and they were like, you guys have got to do this. And it's my um, sister's 60th birthday that weekend so we had to move Ooh, my whole six big sister one. thing. Yeah. <laughs> so my sister's coming to party at Ward Park so it's going to be brilliant. Fantastic, fantastic. Well guys, I really do appreciate the chat. I'm really excited for the show later. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks.
evening, folks, and welcome to About Last Night, and happy Christmas to you all. I'm Joe for the West Coast team, and tonight I'm in the heart of the country. I am in Carmen Nightclub in Athlone. I'm going to be sitting down and chatting to the lads from Hermitage Green. Soundest men in the world. They're just back from an Australian tour. They're now doing loads of gigs over Christmas, so I'm going to chat to them about where you can see them next. Their newest albums, all the new music for 2019, and that's all coming next, so stick around. And welcome to About Last Night. The lads here from Hermitage Green. Um, Thanks a million for sitting down with us, and happy Christmas to you both. Um, I'm just going to start off, lads. You're mental busy over the next couple of weeks. Um, obviously, you're gigging all over Christmas. I always wonder, is this an enjoyable time for you guys, or is it just manic and you're kind of happy to see January? Uh, no, it is enjoyable. It isn't, yeah, yeah, it's enjoyable. Uh, like This year, we kind of um, tried to lay back on gigs a bit and plan towards a big Christmas tour, so we were kind of mentally prepared to go into it. Um, so yeah, I think we're having a great time since uh, we kind of came back from Australia and went straight into Christmas tour. Yeah. So every weekend was kind of, you're gone for three nights, basically. But uh, yeah, really enjoyed this one. Australia sets the bar pretty low in terms of, like Ireland is easy to tour with when you don't have to fly somewhere at seven in the morning the next day. And where do you have coming up now over Christmas, just for everyone at home? Uh, what have we got left? This is our, tomorrow we're in Galway in the Black Box. Yeah. And then after Christmas we've got Carlo, we've got two nights in um, Limerick. We've got Drogheda, we've got... Turles. Turles. Waterford. Waterford. That's it I'd say, is it? Just keep naming places, yes. <laughs> All a monster, basically, you'd be tipping around somewhere. Um, I was reading, just doing a bit, a little bit of prep, I was reading an article about you in the Times where they refer to you as the Irish Munford and Sons. Um, your, your music has developed a lot since then, particularly with uh, Golden Rust, I think. Um, growing up, what were the influences on you guys that kind of made you want to make this type of music? Um, first of all, you definitely get five very different answers for this. We, we all had very... Uh, kind of separate uh, influences. For me, I suppose when I started playing guitar, I got very into like uh, Tin Lizzy, uh, Black Sabbath, ACDC, Guns N' Roses, all the kind of guitar -y bands. Nice and then from there, the yeah, and then from there got a bit more acoustic and singer-songwriter like uh, John Martin and a few people like that. So they were kind of my personal ones. And then got, kind of went into trad from there. Yeah. So a real array of kind of everything. Was, Was there a lot of music in your house growing up? Were you like, did you session a lot in pubs and things like that? No, um, it's, Griff would have taken it up quite early as a kid. I didn't start playing until I was 15. Um, myself and Barry and my brother, we didn't come from a musical family. We just kind of got into it in our, in our teens and uh, went from there. Fair enough. Um, all you lads are born, bred and butted in Munster, I'm right in saying that. Uh, your live album, Live at Curragower, um, was an amazing album. It was a great crack to make and, and why did you choose there? Uh, it was a very obvious choice for us because we kind of st we started out in that bar, basically. Yeah, our very first kind of mess around practice sessions were in that, but be far before we were ever, ever had a name or any of that. Uh, so it was a very natural place to go back to. It's lovely. We've done any videos we've done there have just been really successful. There's a lovely atmosphere in that bar. We're very at home and comfortable with everyone in there. So it kind of yeah, it was the natural place to go to. It was just. Uh, it's just easy, it was a very stress free recording. Yeah. We just in and did a. The crowd were great. The crowd were great, yeah. you know what I mean? Nice and quiet, the way we like them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you talking about Live at Whelan's and he's talking about the Kurgawa EP? I'm talking about uh, the Kurgawa EP. No. No <laughs> audience to that. Oh, sorry, maybe I am confusing <laughs> Live at Whelan's and the Kurgawa EP. Just cut that one, just cut that whole piece out. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Just gonna sweat here for the next half an hour. Um, let's talk a little bit about. Uh, also made a CD and another bar. No, wouldn't have happened. Wouldn't have happened. Um, yeah, it's it's like me. Um, talk a little bit about uh, Golden Rust to kind of save me a little bit from that. Um, you kind of, I, I thought your music developed a little bit in that album. Can you tell me a little bit about kind of the prep that you guys were working on before? No, that's not um, for that album, yeah, we probably had kind of, uh, we kind of got back together and sort of writing together and it was like, it was a productive time leading up to that within the band where we were all kind of in good places and the band was on a, on a decent trajectory and I suppose we were just in a good creative space. Uh, I don't know if there's anything that stands out as in a, a change and a shift to the way we were doing things, but you know what? It's very hard to say what manifests in certain certain songs and, and how they get to where they are, but... Uh, I would say that uh, I think it takes a little bit of time. Well, it definitely took us a bit of time to find 
uh, the type of sound that you want as a band. I think the more you record, the more you go, okay, I kind of love that, I want oh, kind of less of that, I want more of this. And I think by the time we got to Golden Rust, for me anyway, in my head, I was kind of more, I knew what I wanted to be more. You kind of found your sound a little bit, or yeah. what, or like how you wanted to go about making it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, the producer is brilliant as well. Matt Lawrence is a wizard. Mm. And it's, um, you, like, some of it is a vibe with a producer as well. We got on, like, House and Fire with the guy. He really... He really took on board what we were saying to him yeah. throughout and he kind of understood what we wanted. Uh, so he was just a great guy to work with. He was a big part of getting that to sound as it did. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we're actually running out of time. Thanks a million for sitting down me. Sorry for fluffing, fluffing the lines there a little bit, lads. But you're looking. Plenty of B-roll in it. Come here. Uh, good luck tonight and happy Christmas to you both, lads. Appreciate it. 100%. Please welcome our gig of the week, Johnny Moy. How are you doing? How you doing? Good, good. So come here, tell me, we're here at uh, Drop Dead twice. Um, tell me a little bit about this venue as uh, music-wise. Um, well, it's been doing live gigs for years and sort of bringing more DJs in now and stuff. It's a restaurant stroke venue. Um, really cool little spot, you know. Um, Dublin night, obviously. Super spot. It's a little, it's a little hidden away, but yeah. would you get guys, because District 8 is just around the corner, Like, so would you have... Would you just work together at all? Oh yeah, we get spillover from all their yeah. events as well. So um, I, I've only started recently. To, obviously, I've been DJing for God knows how many years. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I just started here, and it, it's awesome, you know. So DJing with um, you worked a lot with Billy Scurries when we had an interview with him, and <coughs> uh, he used to tell he told us a couple of stories about Temple of Sound. Mm -hmm. um, have you any stories? Uh, too many to mention. <laughs> Go uh, on, give us one. It was one. amazing. It was, yeah. it was a club based in a hotel. So yeah. basically we could, um, when me and Billy played, we could stay there for the whole weekend. So it was kind of like you'd, you'd leave your house on a Friday and come home on a Tuesday. Yeah. So um, the stories in between I can't really talk about. But, <laughs> you know. So um, come here. Then obviously, how did you meet Billy? Um, I don't know, just through DJing. Like I was, yeah. I was DJing. I moved to London um, in 1991. I, sort of started collecting records and then I come back started my own clubs here and then after that yeah me and Billy just sort of aligned mm. with the Temple of Sound really yeah well, it's a good before that yeah and that's how I met him and then we just decided to work together a lot mm -hmm. and yeah it was awesome so so you've also um, done the soundtrack for um, for Dublin Old School mm -hmm. and also for um, Young Offenders yep. Tell me a little bit about that. Like, how did that happen? That was great fun. Um, with the Young Offenders, I was friends with Peter Foote, the director. Mm -hmm. um, and we always talked about doing stuff together. He lived with me years ago. And we had a video company together, so we made stuff together. And it was always a dream of both of us to do a feature movie together. Mm -hmm. Then he got the finance to do um, Young Offenders. And he came to me and said, you know, you're going to do the music. And I was like, OK, right. So, you know, that was great fun. Yeah. And I think Dublin Old School sort of came after that, after, you know. Yeah. yeah cause was, was that your first time doing something like that? I'd done smaller stuff, like I'd done videos and stuff yeah. and like small ads and stuff. But yeah, first feature movie was Young Offenders. And I think because it did so well, Dublin Old School was next. And uh, But Dublin Old School was perfect for me because it was it's set... Right in, up your... Uh, yeah, yeah, it was set you. in the 90s. It's set around my time and it was a yeah. thing, you know. Yeah. It was, so. Tell us a, bit, a little bit about you playing here tonight. Um, tonight is me and Billy doing a Christmas party, really. Yeah. Um, we're going to play a lot of party classics and, you know, a lot of our old friends that come down and, mm. you know, that's, that's it, really. Well, come here, look, we wish you all the best. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us and we will catch you again soon. Thank you.